In this section, we're going to be looking at projectiles. Now, projectile problems, um, because we're looking at uh, either projecting or throwing a particle uh, through the air, okay? So this is kind of like the diagram that we're really working with, where a particle is thrown through the air, okay? It, the particle will be thrown at, uh, with an initial velocity, okay? So we could represent that by saying, right, we've got an initial velocity u, okay? And I'm projecting the ball upwards at an angle of theta to the origin, okay? And this is the path of the ball, or the particle. So uh, the assumptions that we're really taking into account here is that um, because we're modeling it as a particle, then we're not thinking about air resistance. Um, obviously, if we're looking at a situation where we've got like a, a parachutist or something like that, uh, then air resistance would have to be taken into account. But if we're just throwing a ball through the air and we're going to model it as a particle, then we don't worry about the air resistance. Now, as for the acceleration, the only acceleration that will be applied to the particle is actually just gravity, okay? And gravity will be working downwards, okay? Uh, there will be no acceleration in the horizontal direction. So the only acceleration will be uh, the gravity pulling it directly downwards, okay? Now, because um, we're working in two dimensions, okay, and gravity is uh, constant, okay, so the acceleration is constant, we can utilize the SUVAT equations, looking at the horizontal motion and the vertical motion separately, okay? Now, an alternative to this is to utilize our understanding of general motion. So if we wanted to describe the acceleration as a vector, then I've told you that there is no horizontal acceleration going on, okay? So the horizontal component of the acceleration will be zero. So zero i. Now, the j component, the vertical component, that is where gravity is working, okay? So we take um, gravity as g for the time being, okay? Then I'm going to have minus g j, okay? So, gravity working downwards, G could be taken, at, taken as 10, 9.8, 9.81, depending on the problem. It will be set for you, okay? So, this would be our situation. That is the acceleration. Now, from what we know from before, we can integrate to get the velocity, okay? Now, 0 will integrate to just a constant value, okay, so let's call that C1, I, and the G will integrate to, well, let's put in plus minus GT plus another constant value, J, okay? Now, what are the initial conditions that we have for this particle? Well, if I drop a perpendicular for that u, okay, then I can represent the initial velocity u in its component forms, the length, uh, the base of the triangle, and the height of the triangle, okay, using Sokotoa. So Sokotoa would be telling me that I've got the opposite and the adjacent, okay? So, uh, if I've got the, op what the opposite side and I've got the hypotenuse, then I'm looking at sine. So, sine of the angle is equal to the opposite side over u, okay, the hypotenuse. So, the opposite side will be u sine theta. So, that's u sine theta. And you will have guessed it, this will be u cosine theta for much the same reason, because cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and so the adjacent is u cosine theta. Okay? So we've got u cosine theta and u sine theta. So the initial velocity 
So when t is zero, the initial velocity, so v, is equal to u cos theta i plus u sine theta j. Okay, so we can substitute those values in, right? So um, the initially, so C1 has got to be equal to the u cos theta. And when t is 0, the C2 has got to be equal to the u sine theta. Okay, so what we can then write is that the velocity is equal to u cos theta i plus u sine theta minus g t j. And this it gives you the velocity equation. Okay, This describes the velocity for the particle at any point along the curve, along through its curved motion. OK, so if you wanted to find, for example, uh, the highest point of the curve, then that would be when the uh, vertical velocity is zero. So if you put u sine theta take away gt equal to zero, you would be able to solve that equation to be able to figure out the time at which we are at its highest point. OK. Then if you wanted to find it, the height, its highest point, its maximum height, then I'm going to need an equation for the displacement. So the displacement we get from the velocity by integrating. Okay. So if we integrate the u cos theta, we're going to get ut cos theta. I'm going to put the t there because it's nicer working it there. Plus a constant value, let's call it k1, i, then plus, integrating this, u t sine theta, and integrating here we get minus a half g t squared j. Oh, I forgot my constant of integration. Didn't really leave myself enough room. Okay. Now, if uh, I am uh, projecting my particle initially at the origin, then the k1 and k2 will be 0. Because when t is 0, I get 0 there, 0 there, 0 there. And so k1 and k2 would have to be 0. If um, I was modelling the particle as being thrown from a certain height, so here I am throwing this ball from a certain height, OK? And I'm told that this is one metre off the ground, for example. Then the I component, well, the K would still be zero, OK? If I model it from zero metres there in the horizontal direction, but this would be plus 1 for the j component, OK? So this is how you could then uh, figure out the height of the particle, um, the, t the, well, the highest point it reaches. You could reach, uh, figure out the furthest distance that it travels, OK? Because at that point, the, y co the uh, j coordinate sorry, of uh, the particle's motion will be 0. And so you'd be able to find that time, substitute it into the I component, and it tells you how far you've gone. OK? So you can utilise um, this formula in order to solve problems using uh, projectiles. Now, of course, as I said, OK, because we're working with constant acceleration, the SUVAT equations still hold, OK? So you can use the SUVAT equations to uh, solve these problems also, 
okay? You've just got to be aware that you're still going to be using the U cos theta, U sine theta, okay? Everything's still getting used, but if you want to um, use the formulas as it stands here, then you can utilize them in that way also, okay? The only reason I really kind of bring this up as a way of doing it um, is really because that was how I was taught to do it. Uh, way back when, when I did mechanics for the first time, okay? Um, this is how I was shown how to deal with these problems. Because what's nice about it is that um, if I had this memorized, okay? So I could either memorize that one or I could memorize that one, okay? Because I could differentiate or integrate between uh, as required, then I can see everything from two equations, the problems of two equations, and then adapt the problem as required. Um, it's really going to be up to you how you work through these problems and how you are taught, okay? Um, but I will be showing kind of like a medley of the ways of doing it, okay? So you can really um, pick up how exactly you want to tackle these projectile problems.